Hi there, I'm Chef Eric Crowley, owner of the Culinary Classroom in West Los Angeles, and a great dessert for Valentine's Day is our chocolate creme brulee. Ready? Let's get started. We will need two cups or one pint of heavy cream. Whipping cream will wind up working just fine. A three ounces of bittersweet or semi-sweet chocolate chips, five egg yolks, a third of a cup plus two tablespoons of granulated sugar, a little pinch of salt, and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. We are going to take our heavy cream and begin to scald it. That means we're going to place it into a medium-sized pot and put it over a high heat just until it starts to begin to boil. While that is scalding, we can go ahead and we can separate our eggs. You can check that out on a, another video on mahalo.com. So the bubbling comes around the rim of the pot prior to it actually bubbling all over the surface and boiling over, and that is scalding. We're gonna take our sugar and combine it with our egg yolks with our little pinch of salt and half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna blend these together with a whip. Get them really nicely combined. So we're gonna do a classic technique that we call tempering. And that involves taking our hot liquid and incorporating it into some eggs by gradually pouring it in while we're constantly whipping and moving around our egg yolks. Gonna take the hot cream and slowly pour it in Notice I'm also pouring the cream and letting it drip over the wires of the whip. That's gonna help cool off the cream. And that's also gonna help uh, bring up the temperature of the eggs. We, we have to have our custard. This is our scalded cream mixed up with our egg yolks and our sugar and a little bit of salt, really important. We're gonna combine it with our melted chocolate. Check out our videos at Mahalo on how to melt chocolate. Go ahead and combine these together. Give it a little stir. Get the chocolate really well blended into the custard. You may find that using the whip will achieve that a little bit more rapidly. And then we're ready to fill up our custard cups. I find that utilizing a measuring pitcher will wind up working really well, especially one that has a spout on it. I'm gonna take my blended chocolate custard and fill up my custard dishes. Prior to going into the oven, the custards need to be um, set up in a bain-marie. I have a towel here that's gonna wind up absorbing some hot water that I have on the stove. Should be right off the boil, really nice and hot. It shouldn't be water from the tap, it's just not hot enough. We're gonna wind up adding in some hot water into the pan, enough to come up halfway up the side of the custard cup. Rather than pouring it from a pot, I find that using something like a ladle makes it a little bit easier. You want to make sure that you do not spill water or splash water onto the custard. Even baking is the real reason for baking this in a bain-marie. If we wind up taking these custard cups and we just pour them on, put them onto a baking sheet and bake them in the oven without any water at all, the custard is actually going to get done and then overdone on the outside before the inside gets done. So you're going to have a really cooked egg tasting custard on the outside and the inside of the cup is still going to be really soupy. This is gonna help even out the baking. These guys are gonna wind up going into a 350 oven. I usually like to check them after about 20 minutes. I'm looking for the interior of the custard itself to shake like jello gelatin. And when I have that, I get them out of the oven and let them cool off completely before I refrigerate them. So now that our custard has come out of the oven, uh, it has uh, firmed up really nicely as it's cooled off. Refrigerate it overnight if you can. And to finish it off, we're gonna burn our sugar on top of it. Gonna take some granulated sugar, and I just take a spoonful and just go ahead and sprinkle a generous amount of sugar all over the top of the custard. The more sugar you sprinkle, the thicker of a crust you're going to create. And then we're gonna wind up utilizing a propane torch. I have one here that's got a plumber's nozzle on it, so I don't have to turn the torch upside down. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our torch and I'm gonna to start to slowly lower the flame onto the sugar. You can see how the sugar will start to ball up at first. It'll start to get clear, and then it'll turn amber almost immediately. Then it'll start to get a really deep caramel. Then it's actually going to blacken, and that's what I want. I actually want to burn the sugar. That's what brulee means. It means to burn. We're going to blacken it on up so it winds up getting a, a, like a bittersweet flavor. That's going to have a really hard, crispy shell, so we'll have a really nice, sweet custard underneath a really bittersweet, crunchy crust. 
You can see as the, uh, the sugar starts to melt, I'm gonna keep the torch focused on the unmelted portions of the sugar. And you're gonna start to get some smoke coming up as it starts to burn up, and that's absolutely fine, but watch out for inhaling the smoke. And there we are. That is our chocolate creme brulee with a burnt sugar crust. So with our finished uh, creme brulee to make a really nice finishing touch for Valentine's Day, you can make a nice little template out of parchment paper that you can check out on another video. Lay that right on top of your finished crust. Get a little basket and go ahead and sift some powdered sugar on top. Spoon a little bit of sugar in there. Give it a nice light tapping. And get that heart-shaped section really well coated up with sugar. There we go. Okay. And then we're carefully remove the template. Just in time for Valentine's Day. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on other links so you can get other recipes. If you don't see something that interests you, email a request to requests at mahalo.com. Also be sure to subscribe so you can get lots of wonderful additional information. Thanks and I'll see you soon.